Welcome. Welcome to DTLT Today. Hello, everybody. Andy, did you see the news? Uh, I think it was just yesterday or maybe even the day before uh, where Google Plus has a whole bunch of new <laughs> Hangout features. So it wasn't the breaking news. It wasn't the breaking news. Okay. I'm, right, trying, I'm, I'm trying to forget that news. I've pushed it out to the back of my head. Yeah, because I, I don't know what happened with that breaking news thing. I don't know either. Thing. But that happened apparently in this in this space. But apparently, more important things happened in the ed tech world than what we covered yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. we should probably cover some of that. So right. um, Google Plus announced a whole bunch of new features and a really weird blog post where they're like keeping track with numbers. So I guess this was number like 91 to 101 or somewhere yeah. around there. But I saw the post <laughs> name all those numbers. But what's, what's interesting, you know, of course, uh, when you're talking about Google+, Plus, the rule is you can't talk about Google+, Plus without being in Google+. Plus. So we're in Google+, Plus right now, and actually Jason is in the Hangout with us. Uh, how's it going, Jason? There he is. You're yeah. live on, on DTLT fine? today. Yeah. Now, where's the other guy that was participating in this? Maybe about him out for an activity. I'm not right. sure. Well, let's let's see if we can go get check him on him. Back in there, yeah. But anyway, I wanted to talk about the Google Plus Hangout stuff in particular because it really seems like Google at this point is making a play for the Illuminate type of space. So before it was just sort of more group video chat, which of course plays against Skype. Uh, but now they've added in screen sharing. They've added in Google Docs integration, which you really can't do even in Skype. They've added in regular note sharing, and they've added in a whiteboard feature. So in addition to the chat functions. And the other things I think they mentioned was that you st you're still limited to 10 people, but now an unlimited number of people can watch the Hangout. So if you reach the 10 max, anybody else that shows up can watch. They just can't participate. And that you could also record a Hangout, in addition to some other things about being able to use mobile devices. It was really a slew of updates. Um, is well, there were there were a couple of interesting things I thought in there. Um, first was that their that broadcasting right. piece that you're talking about. Um, they're rolling it out to kind of select users. They said. The other thing that I noticed was they talked about the uh, extras that you mentioned, and it says click here to use you know Google extras for free for oh, really? a limited time. So that made me wonder if down the line they might see the extras as some sort of revenue stream. Uh, that certainly hasn't been the way Google has done things previously, but um, but maybe they're turning a corner and trying to go beyond search revenue. That's very interesting. Um, but my thought was that if you could expand the Hangout limits high enough that you could get a class in there or figure out right. some way to manage people in and out so that people who wanted to ask questions could, and if Plus became a part of the uh, Google Apps for Ed stack, which certainly would be a possibility. Then you would see that really as being taking on, you know, Adobe Connect and uh, now Blackboard Collaborate, what used to be Illuminate and Wimba, um, and and seemingly seriously threatening those. Yeah, that's markets. interesting. I didn't notice that they put the wording in there about uh, free for for the time or something. Usually Google doesn't uh, say anything like that, uh, but. And, and you know, I've argued for a long time. I, you know, since Hangout came out, and I think that was around what, whenever July. Or I don't even know how plus, how long Plus has been out now. But I've argued for a while that the Hangout feature is less a feature and it's more a product. I mean, I really wish that I could do Hangouts with people who didn't have Google accounts, for example, or I wish that they made it easier to not sign up for the social network side, even if you did have a Google account, that you didn't have to have a whole Plus profile and everything, that you could just use a Hangout just by signing in with your Google account even. Mm -hmm. uh, and so far that hasn't been the case. It's still been so tightly integrated into the... Um, Google Plus uh, ecosystem to where you had to to be in their social network in order to use it. Now I don't. I mean, I don't have too much to say about Google Plus. I signed up when it first started. Mm -hmm. Got the account like any good techie does. When something new, you right. automatically go and you join. <laughs> um, but you know, after the initial few days, and I just constantly got inundated by people who wanted to either join my circle or invited me to join theirs. Um, it seemed like a Facebook clone. Um, Twitter's been doing really well for me, so I haven't really even used Facebook all that much. 
But the interesting thing to me was the Google, the, the Hangouts, right. um, and obviously the video, me being the, the video guru that I am. So it's interesting to, you know, just to kind of see this conversation that we're able to do right here. And um, I've got my friend Perry in front of my webcam, right. so he's just <laughs> another uh, participant in this, in this particular conversation. I don't know if he'll say all that much. He usually keeps pretty quiet, but. Jason, do you all use Google Apps at your school? Well, um, have you been watching the kind of the buzz today? Uh, there seems to be, at least when I've been watching my Twitter stream, uh, a fair amount of pushback with the latest Facebook redesign. You know, another month, another <laughs> Facebook redesign. And a few people, now granted most of the people I follow on Twitter are, you know, kind of techies who would race out to get Google Plus accounts, but I've seen several of them say that the Facebook redesign was enough of a hassle for them that it was a push for them towards Google Plus. So I'm interested to see what will happen with Google Plus now that Facebook has given another reason for everybody to well, be mad at even them. even from day one, I noticed in Google Plus that there were more people in that, I guess because of the fact that you were signing in with your Google account, I saw more people that I recognized from Facebook than ever when I started following people on Twitter. With Twitter, it seemed very limited in terms of the people I know in real life using it. You know, I, I have a lot of my online, you know, PLN, you know, your social network on there of people that you may have met once or twice, uh, you know, or a few times, maybe colleagues at work that are in the know for that kind of thing. But for the most part, uh, it, it hasn't been like that. And as soon as I sin signed into Google+, Plus, it was like all these people that I'd like gone to college with and all these people that I'd hung out with on occasion were suddenly like adding me to a circle. And it was very odd uh, how mm. that adoption happened. And I guess it's just the strength of Google's network behind it. But mm. yeah, who doesn't complain when Facebook has a redesign? I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I always hear about all the <laughs> any minute change that they make. And just, you know, <laughs> uh, it's never a good thing, apparently. Well, and it's, it's, I think it's interesting that, I called, that they called it a redesign because what I got was just kind of notifications that, like, the feed, how the feed worked changed as opposed to, you know, I was looking for a redesign at Facebook. and I didn't Maybe really, you haven't received it yet. Uh, could know. be. I don't know could if it's be. I mean, it, it did give me little pop-ups that said, here's how Facebook has changed over, uh -huh. you know, the last couple of days or whatever. Um, so I don't know... It, are you, getting again? Little blue corners? Are you getting the little blue corners? I don't know if I am, Jason. I, I, and I'm, and I, like I say, I don't use it so enough on, to... On Facebook, apparently now they have this thing. Here are posts that you may find interesting, and they all have a little blue corner. Oh, all right. I, and, and I guess there's I some algorithm I do know what you're talking about, it. and it did, it did mention that. If you click on the blue corners, it gives you more information or something. So um, I guess I did receive it, but gosh, you know... <laughs> I feel like I just don't care about Facebook all that much to, <laughs> to really even have that affect me. So, Why are you even on it then? Well, it, it's good for my family. I mean, yeah. My family posts an awful lot of stuff about things that are going on, and, you know, it's a good distance away. So it's, it's nice to get up to date on, on things that are happening four or 500 miles away from here. Um, and they're not on Twitter, so, and I'd right. love them to be there, but, um, you know, Facebook, I guess, is the next best thing, and, and I've at least got access it, and... It's a good way for me to, to say happy birthday to my relatives and, and right. that sort of thing. So, Now, Jason, does your school use Google Apps? And everybody, um, well, actually, they, they, <laughs> it's a long <laughs> I'm story. I'm sorry I brought it up. Um, they, they have, they've been using Google Mail for uh -huh. the students for quite a while. And they briefly were going to do a major Google Apps spread rollout. But now we're going towards okay. Live mm -hmm. EDU. Um, for for a couple of reasons, the um, the integration with kind of the existing Microsoft, you know, we have an Exchange server, but it's used to Outlook. Um, and the other big reason was the the larger disk space uh, allocation that you get with the Live EDU. I think it's 25 gigs. Uh, there are a couple of our programs that have a portfolio thing in place, and having that block of disk space uh, available in the Live EDU product kind of yeah. met that need for us which kind of nudged us that way yeah. instead of Something from Google. Google, and I can't remember who who it was, but they tweeted out yesterday that they also had some exciting news coming soon. You know, of course, with Google, it's all coming soon. You know, yeah, <laughs> there's right. always stuff right on the horizon. They just haven't done it yet, but they're, they're anxious to tell you about what they haven't done. But, uh, and, and a lot of people have thought that it's referring to the fact that Google Apps might finally get access to Google+. Plus. Um, 
So, you know, that'll be interesting again. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean... <laughs> well, people have been talking a lot about the kind of the Google upside with all this, but, you know, one thing that kind of really caught my attention was the whole real identity... Uh, that is very interesting. Kerfuffle. So apparently... Is that still the case that you have to have a real name to sign up? And admitted uh, that they were really seeing Google Plus as in part uh, eventually an internet-wide identity provider kind of solution. Well, Do you remember seeing that quote? I think it was from Eric Schmidt, but don't. I'm not sure. Where essentially they came out and said the reason we're doing this is because we want to be an identity provider. And, and of course, it helps to sell ads when you're a real person, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But but I think you know what I read in that was this idea that you could down the line use kind of the way you use Open ID right now, or you have lots of Facebook logins um, to things that's already built with things like Facebook Connect. But you could see with Google since it's tied to more verifiable identity stuff than, than some systems that, that they may see it really stretching. Remember, they've already got Google Wallet, and I saw that just, did they just launch a, some sort of pilot with a, a Samsung device where you could use your NFC that had an yeah. NFC chip, I think. So you can see that moving along. So I could see a situation where down the line you could use your Google ID and it would log you into things and then tie into e-commerce and would hook into your wallet and hook to your credit cards, which of course is, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. Would be a because, big deal. I mean, this is Google's business model. They're, they all, most all of their products that they put out are usually free of charge, so they've got to make money somehow. They're not making it right now. I mean, they're trying to, but they're not really making great money off of advertising search. Boy, would they love to make this huge network, get people, you know, get all of their information and be able to sell that to advertisers. So this is one step of the process. You get them signing into other services with their Google account. You have them tying their wallet and their credit cards to it. They become this major ecosystem. Apple's trying to do the same thing with their Apple ID, yeah. uh, where you're logging in. It's <clears throat> it's very easy to buy things with an Apple account, as I can attest to with the <laughs> apps and things. And, and that's the, you know... But at the same time, Apple would rather charge you for something once, I think, than put ads on it and give it away for free. So it seems to be two different mindsets from the companies there. Um, well, and it's also, you know, I, I always do appreciate Apple's design aesthetic. Right. when it comes to any of these things. But um, I got to say that like Google's products more recently have been very better. well yep. designed. That, yep. And like every time I see that buddy, button on a Google product saying, would you like to try out our new design? I'm actually excited about it, which is yeah. a sign of something. You know, exactly. the, Go the Google Docs has shown some new improvements and the, the login page. I, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see when Gmail g grabs some of those changes because that seems the one holdout yeah, right I, now. I, I think, I mean, when I think of Facebook, I think of just ugly terrible design and mm -hmm. it's 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 never an interface that I want to look at photos in or look at videos in um, or or even have any conversations in necessarily it just it 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 almost you know reminds me of, of some of the older systems that that were out there the friendsters and the oh, and the myspace it's no myspace Are well you kidding me? I don't know I just maybe it just it, it just kind of gives that that amateurish feel compared to what what's right. possible these days and and you know it's difficult to look at. I don't know. I, I don't. I'm surprised that you have as much tolerance as you do about about Facebook because I, you're the I, I you're will the design guy. In I the, will say in my respect. For, I will say my respect for Facebook design was more from a user inter interface perspective of getting users to easily upload photos, easily yeah. upload video. Like the fact that there's so much content on Facebook is testament to the fact that they are very good at getting people comfortable with doing those kind of advanced things. Yeah. And, you know, there are 80-year-olds out there uploading photos, uploading videos, commenting and interacting with a social network. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing you really didn't see in MySpace. But, I, I mean, I have to say that I, I still get confused did, did about walls and, this morning? and comments, you know, commenting on people's pages and, yeah. and kind of where to go to get the information that you need or that you're looking for on Facebook. So... It, it may just be me, or or I'm thinking, you know, just I'm not thinking like a a, a 17 year old. I'm thinking like a 47 year old. Yeah. So, who Maybe. knows? What were you saying, Jason? Well, I saw an infographic today, and I can't remember who put it out. Uh, that was talking about the size of uh, Facebook's mm -hmm. photo collection. You know, when they they showed it how it scaled compared to Flickr and the Library of Congress, and it was like orders of magnitude. 
and I I want to say something like they they came up with the figure that Facebook now hosts four percent of all photos ever taken in the history <laughs> of the world. It. Or I believe like it. That. And, and, and in that respect, you, you do have to acknowledge that Facebook has been able to scale yeah. on an unbelievable. Uh, and and you'll scale. never be you'll never be able to ever get them out again. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I I I guess I'm coming off as anti anti Facebook. Um, well, no, I I mean I'm very much there. I I lurk on Facebook, but post okay very very rarely. Um, and I practice what I preach. I cut the cord back. I'm really day. interested to see what, whether it's Diaspora or right. the Freedom Box Project, um, you know, in terms of what would happen if all this social networking stuff was as decentralized right. as the web is. And certainly people who have been working on that for a long time. I wonder, uh, have you guys heard of the, I think I mentioned in a Google Hangout, I was with some of you on a couple of months ago or something about the Raspberry Pi okay. Project. Uh, that's coming into the UK, and this idea of having a board that you can get at 25 or 35 bucks, and that that, for me, I'm really anxious to see if that's going to be a tipping point where the, the machine will be cheap enough that somebody will buy it and run their own, you know, Diaspora server or Freedom Box or whatever. Yeah, that'll be very interesting, and I saw someone else joined us, and I almost can't see the picture. What's up? Who's who's with us? Announce yourself. Hey, Sam, how are you doing? Hi, Ben. Oh, Ben, how are you doing? And apparently my connection's a little slow. A slow connection at Longwood? Ben actually replaced me in my position at Longwood University. No way. Congratulations, Ben. <laughs> we're we're yeah. happy to have Timmy Boy here. Yeah, thank you. So, Ben, we're, we're live. We're, we're talking. Yeah. We're actually recording an episode, and we were sort of just talking about the new Google Plus features and how it relates to Illuminate and some of those other Blackboard-type features, Wimba, and the things that uh, those companies are selling for massive amounts of money and what the possibilities are for um, Google with offering this stuff for free. Jason mentioned that uh, one of the lines that Google mentioned was that these extra features would be free for now. Uh, and I had I had not read that. Um, it's very interesting right. that maybe they might be charging it in the future. Well, another thing about that that possibility is if you look at Google Voice stuff, um, how they everything says free calling for 2011, and it doesn't really say what's really? going to happen after that. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Well, that, but that that's free calling to the PTSN, isn't it? I mean, because um, I think you could see a situation where enough people get on to Google Chat. And things where you could start actually seeing that voice network, you know, especially when you have to start paying to access the telephone network from Google Voice, where people might just switch over and there might be a way to call people's Google Voice things via yeah. Google Voice without paying, and then people shift over, hmm. at least potentially. Yeah. And, and see, that kind of stuff makes me nervous. Like the email, I can find another email provider and, you know, I'll get my stuff out of Gmail and find somewhere else to go. You know, Google Docs, okay, I can live without it. There are several things that I can probably live without and not cry too much, but I've been a Google Voice user for like two years now. It's been my number that I give out to everyone, and if there's any service of Google's that I'm like completely tied to 100%, it would be that. Yeah, and what's funny is I, I, I was all behind Google Voice and went out and got my number right away, and I still like haven't integrated it into any of my kind of daily... It, you know, usage. It's, it's hard. It's harder. You you have an iPhone, so it's a little harder to get that integration. Whereas exactly. when I switched to Android, it was pretty seamless in terms of people call me on that number. Exactly. I can call out on that number. All my SMS is integrated with it, and that kind of thing. Right. So I, I, and I've heard people tell me exactly that. It, it all has to do with what phone you have. Right. Um, whether it's more in the Google ecosystem or not. So. Well, we need to wrap up this show. I think we've gone on well over 15 minutes. But, guys, thanks <laughs> for we, joining us. we usually do. Um, All right. Thanks hey, for Tom. hanging out with us. Yeah. Thanks, Get for, having us. thanks for hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Good seeing you both. Take it easy, folks. And thank you for watching DTLT. We'll catch you all another time. Peace. So long.